What's up guys, Zach's Sauce, AKA Confused Insurgent here and welcome back to another episode of Will It Game. On today's episode, we have uh, one of the mid-range cards from the AMD 500 series lineup, the RX 560. This, the, this is the, the RX 560. Again, this was made by AMD. And before we get too deep into that card, I'd like to go over a few things from previous previous episodes, uh, giveaway updates, if you will. For one, we actually gave away two video cards on the last uh, giveaway video because uh, due to a mistake I made in counting up the original comments on that video, I left one person out, which caused uh, the winner to be one less than the uh, the actual winner should have been. Uh, what I did is I ended up giving a video card to both uh, both winners, both the winner that I announced in the original uh, video and the actual winner that I found after adding all the comments up. So there basically I counted 26 comments, there were actually 27. So the random number 20, instead of being Steph de Mulemeister, was actually Harris Kumar. So I ended up sending a video card to both of them. Um, I actually bought one uh, to send to Harris, that way it wouldn't affect any of the future giveaways. Uh, Steph actually got the 750 Ti, and Harris Kumar, I bought a GT 1030 uh, because shipping to India is uh, a little difficult and I didn't have another 750 Ti on hand. So I spent a similar amount of money uh, on Amazon.in and had it shipped directly to him. Uh, so both of them have their cards, both winners. And uh, on this, this video, uh, if you drop a comment down below and make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share also. Mainly subscribe, uh, give me a thumbs up, Share the video wherever you want to, whoever whoever you would like to. Obviously, we want more people to see these, so we get more people involved. Uh, then the giveaways can become more extravagant as uh, as more people are seeing the video. Anyway, uh, I will be giving away this GTX 950. This is a uh, an OEM 950 model by HP, I think. Uh, regardless, it's the same performance as basically any 950 you're going to get off the shelf. So I will be giving away this GTX 950 in this video. Drop a comment down below, and in the comment, make sure to tell me that you want to be entered. Um, I will try to parse through the comments of, just of people that don't want to be entered and are just commenting. Make sure in your comment you tell me that you want to be entered in the, to the giveaway for the 950. Also, if you have already won previously, we only have three winners so far, obviously, but if you've already won previously, you are no longer eligible. 950 on the table uh, for this video. Remember, drop a comment, subscribe, like, share, all of the above, uh, and then you will be entered in to win the giveaway. Moving on, uh, back to today's card, the RX 560. I'm gonna move this 950 over here so that the 560 is the king of the show. The RX 560 was originally released in May 2017 at an MSRP of $99. So that's a pretty decent mid-range card. In October 2017, roughly, kind of announced, kind of shady under the table dealings that AMD was gonna release an RX 560 that was chopped slightly. So the RX 460, which came out in uh, 2016, had 896 SPs and 14 CUs. The RX 560, when it was released in May of 2017, had 1,024 SPs and 16 CUs. It was a, a Polaris 11 GPU, which is the same GPU that the 460 is based on. However, it was fully enabled. Uh, when the 460 originally came out, it ran on the Polaris 11 architecture, but it had uh, one section of the, the GPU's uh, processing units was essentially chopped or turned off, essentially not chopped off. Uh, and the thought was that AMD was seeing poor yields on the Polaris 11, and uh, in order to increase their yields and increase profitability, they disabled uh, part of the, the graphics processor, which would allow them to see, see higher yields. So, for instance, when you're printing all these uh, GPUs on the wafers at the manufactory, the parts of the GPUs will uh, be defective. You will get certain, a certain percentage of your printed GPUs will be defective. That's just, you just have to eat that cost generally. However, if you can increase your yields and thereby increase profitability by turning off the sections that are not working. And if it's in this case, if, it's, if it only happens to be one section of say the four or five uh, processing sections on the GPU, if you are able to disable that and still sell it, then you're making money. Instead of having to toss that one in the bin, 
uh, or in the trash bin, uh, you can still sell it and make money. So AMD disabled it on all the 460s. People found this out because they were able to use a BIOS mod to fully unlock it. If your 460 was not one of the, the GPUs that was defective and was just chopped to make it fall in line with the other 460s, if you uh, flash the BIOS on it, you could get the benefit of all 1024 SPs and 16 CUs. So the 560, when it came out, uh, AMD had figured out the problems with manufacturing the Polaris 11. They fully enable it, which gives the 560 uh, 15 to 20% lead over the 460 uh, in your average title. In October of 2017, people noticed a 560 being released that had the still disabled Polaris 11 GPU in it, bringing it back down to 896 and 14. The problem is, AMD and its board partners did not list this as anything but the 560. In most cases, when it was originally released, in most cases, it was just called the 560. So you were buying an RX 560 for the same $99 that you paid, you might've paid months ago for a fully unlocked Polaris 11, you're now getting a locked down Polaris 11. This caused an uproar and uh, is a generally a pretty shady practice, but both manufacturers, uh, AMD and Nvidia, have done this before uh, and probably will continue to do so in future. You wanna watch out for that. There's, unfortunately, because of the naming scheme being the same, there's not really too many ways to figure out which one you might have other than getting the card, looking in GPU Z, and seeing how many uh, how many units you have available to you. The fully unlocked RX 560 had a base clock of 1175 megahertz that could boost up to 1275 megahertz, memory clock of seven gigabits per second uh, at GDDR5, and a memory bus width of 128 bits. It came with four gigabytes of VRAM, but they also had two gigabyte versions available. It had a TDP anywhere between six and 80 plus watts. Now your manufacturers, your, your, your board partners uh, could produce the card at whatever TDP they wanted within that range. So some of the board partners brought out ones that did not require PCIe power connectors. Some of your board partners brought out cards that did require PCIe power connectors. And the reason you would do that is the little extra juice you could get above the 75 watts provided by the, uh, the PCIe slot meant that you could uh, see more significant overclocks, uh, get a little more performance out of it and sell it for a little bit more, obviously. Transistor count of three billion. That's, it's not a small GPU. Three billion is pretty good. Ma manufactured on the 14 nanometer process. This was a GCN4, Graphics Core Next 4. So this is yet another uh, revolution, yet another evolution, I should say, of the original GCN architecture released in the HD7970 way back in 2012. So all that being said, as I said, it has an MSRP of $99. However, right now it's in the 125-ish range on eBay due to the GPU shortage caused by miners that is still going on today. And actually it has no sign of stopping or slowing down, unfortunately, so you're gonna have to deal with that. Even these low-end cards that are not very good miners at all uh, are still seeing slight price hikes due to just a shortage of parts. So let's go over the benchmarks I'm gonna use. First of all, I have added in Far Cry 5 uh, as, as one of the benchmarks. That's a brand new game that just came out last week-ish uh, by Ubisoft and um, has pretty is pretty good uh, has pretty good graphical quality but also performs very well on low to mid-range mid hardware as well as obviously on high-end hardware. And I've removed Hitman. Hitman's kind of a pain, uh, the benchmark it has a built-in benchmark, but it doesn't stop automatically, uh, and it doesn't display the results at the end of the benchmark. It just runs through the benchmark and then exits. So you either have to like capture it with a capture tool or just watch it to see your average frame rate. So kind of annoying, and uh, I've just removed it entirely. Also, the DirectX 12 part of Hit Hitman was hit or miss. Uh, no pun intended. We're not gonna we're not gonna include Hitman anymore, and Far Cry 5 has taken its place. So on the benchmarks list, we have 2013's Tomb Raider and 2015's Rise of the Tomb Raider. We have Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor from 2013 and its sequel, Middle Earth Shadow of War from 2017. We have Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege from 2015 and Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands from 2017. Deus Ex Mankind Divided from 2016, Steep from 2016, Far Cry Primal 2016 and Far Cry 5 2018, and Doom from 2016. For synthetics, we also have Unigen's Heaven, Valley, and Superposition as well as 3D Mark's Fire Strike and Time Spy graphics card score only. So now that, uh, now that you know the benchmarks and you know about the card itself, we're gonna hop right into the benchmark results. 
There'll be some graphs on the screen. For the next couple minutes, you'll be able to see the performance of the card in question. Uh, each graph will be on the screen for about five seconds. Feel free to pause at any point if you wanna take a closer look at the results. Also, there's going to be an overall chart in there that will give you a, uh, an idea of how this stands up against the cards I've already reviewed. There's also a new chart, a uh, performance per dollar chart. Basically, it's gonna tell you how many FPS you're gonna gain per US dollar you spend on the card at today's prices on the used market. So for instance, if this card is $125 and it gets say 45-ish FPS on a game, that means you would need to spend about $2.75 per uh, FPS increase. So $2.75 would gain you one FPS, another $2.75 would gain you another FPS, so on and so forth until you got to the uh, 45 that the card was actually giving you. So that gives you an idea of how each card is gonna uh, perform with your wallet. So how much money am I spending here to get FPS on said game? I'm all, the chart only covers the three primary games in the overall charts because it's a lot of data, uh, and, but it does cover every card that I've done so far uh, in a price performance ratio. Also, all the benchmark results are collated in a Google document spreadsheet, which you can find in the description down below. That spreadsheet is always updated with the latest results. I do go back occasionally and benchmark older cards uh, to make sure that new driver updates and so on and so forth haven't done any major changes. Also, when I added Far Cry 5, I've already gone back and updated uh, some of the cards with the Far Cry 5 results. So you'll be able to see those in the Google Docs spreadsheet. After the benchmarks, we'll come back here for my thoughts and conclusions, and I'll see you there. see even at 1080p which is honestly a middling to low end resolution these days the RX 560 is not really up to the task and that's unfortunate because at 100 bucks that's that's a uh, if at its MSRP of 100 bucks I should say that's it's a pretty compelling price for a uh, a mid what is supposed to be a mid-range video card but most of these games um, you're not going to get playable frame rates 1080p medium high, you're gonna to have to drop down to low. And at low, uh, your experience is gonna suffer. Honestly, 1080p low is usually a little worse than an Xbox One or a PS4 is gonna get you. Um, and you could buy an Xbox One or a PS4, especially if you're going for the first gen, if you're not looking at a 1S, 1X, PS4 Pro kind of thing, uh, those are gonna be cheaper gaming options that are gonna give you higher fidelity uh, than uh, this card combined with a, a pre-built system would. So that's unfortunate. Um, it is a pretty compelling price at its MSRP. It would be a little more compelling if it was at its MSRP, if it wasn't you know, 25 to $50 higher than that. If it was still sitting at $100, it might be a little more compelling, especially if you didn't wanna buy a used card. But if you're looking on the used market at $100, uh, you could step up to a GTX 950 and, uh, and see pretty significant uh, FPS increases in most of the titles. And that's what I would recommend, uh, going with something like a 950 or above uh, for most everything. Only on only your old, older titles or your eSports level titles like your, your Counter-Strikes or your Dotas uh, or even your Rainbow Six Sieges, would a card like this be okay at the 1080p um, medium high uh, and above levels? That's all I have for today. Uh, this is a pretty, should be a pretty quick episode overall. And like I said, 
Will it game? Yes. Uh, is it worth it? No, I probably would not recommend the 560. Um, I am going to be giving this card away though in the coming episodes, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Also remember, drop a comment down below, like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you want the 950, bingo. And uh, I will be doing an episode um, in the next couple days, uh, a, a, a new kind of series called Hardware Help, where I'm going to go over uh, removing the cooling shroud from various GPUs, uh, replacing the thermal paste, making sure everything's clean and in working order, and then putting it back on. So if you're interested in something like that, make sure to leave me a comment letting me know that's something you'd be interested in seeing. Also, any other uh, hardware modification, repair kind of things you'd like to see, let me know. Uh, I've done most of them before, so I'll be happy to uh, give a guide through there. And um, we still got quite a few cards to go, still some powerful cards. Some, uh, some workstation models, as you can see, this is an S9000, which is the Fire Pro that is based on the HD7970, and it's fully passive, interestingly enough. There's no active cooling on this puppy, uh, but there is a pretty significant heat sink right there. Um, so that's coming up still, you know, I, you know, can the workstation cards also game? We'll see. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I know that one's new, but make sure to drop the, you know, share the video wherever you, put it on Facebook or, um, Twitter or uh, what are some of the other things? I don't know, Tumblr. Um, I don't do much social media. I do Facebook. Uh, Snapchat, I guess. You could Snapchat it to somebody. I mean, they'd only be able to see it for 10 seconds, but maybe that's long enough. I don't know. Uh, whatever you want to do, you know, share the video. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.